Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me today. My name is Anna Beam, and I am the e-content specialist at the Reaching Across Illinois Library System, also known as RAILS. And I am here to tell you about Inky.org, which is a resource that is available to you via your local library. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off my video um, and keep talking to you about Inky.org. All right. So what is Inky.org? Inky.org is a website that you have access to, uh, and on that website, you are going to find a suite of resources. Those resources support Illinois authors with online book creation and publishing tools, um, and you can do that via Pressbooks, which is relatively straightforward editing and ebook creation software. Inky.org also provides Illinois authors with avenues to share their work with readers, um, and that is via something called the Indie Author Project, which is an organization that we partner with that allows self-published authors to share their work with readers here in Illinois and across the country. Inky.org also allows readers to access locally produced content, and that is via something called the Inky.org Library. This is a library collection of e-content and self-published ebooks by Illinois authors and creators. So essentially, Inky.org provides you with a way to take something that you've written, self-publish it as an ebook, and then add that ebook to your library's ebook collection for other people to read. One thing I want to highlight about this service is that um, you do not need a library card to access this resource. You just need to be located in the state of Illinois. It is something that is geolocated to Illinois, so you just need to be within those the state border. So I'm going to go into uh, more detail about each of the aspects of Inky.org in my presentation today, uh, including a quick demo of, of each. So let's go ahead and start talking about Pressbooks. So this is the online book creation and publishing tools. As I mentioned on my last slide, uh, Pressbooks is online software that allows you to create ebook files. So this is where you can go, uh, you can take the thing that you've written and turn it into an ebook. Uh, it takes about five steps to do this. I, I counted. Uh, once, it, like I said, it's relatively straightforward. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to you know, get onto the website and register for a Pressbooks account. Um, again, you don't need a library card to do this. So there is one thing you're going to need, and that is an email account. That is the only sort of barrier to entry. You need to have that email account in order to set up a Pressbooks account. But once you do that, you get logged into your Pressbooks account, uh, you are going to see a dashboard. Um, and on that dashboard, you can go ahead and add your book information, which includes the title of your project, your name as the author, etc. Then you can add and organize your text. So there is a text editor in Pressbooks. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and log in, you could write your whole book right there in the Pressbooks software. You can also take something like a Word document and import it into Pressbooks or copy and paste from a Google Doc, et cetera. Once you have your the, the work that you've written uh, all imported into Pressbooks, you can select a design theme, um, which means you can sort of change the font, chapter headings, add a cover image, make your, your ebook look like a book, um, and then you go ahead and export it. You can export uh, your ebook um, as like an EPUB file, which is kind of a standard ebook file or a PDF, et cetera. Uh, on Inky.org, you can also access Pressbooks training resources, um, which means you can always go back to the Inky.org website if you're on Pressbooks and you get stuck somewhere, and you can find more information, including you know, a link to their user manual, um, some helpful instructional videos, et cetera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit my slideshow, and I'm going to go into a quick live demo of what it looks like to log into Pressbooks and upload some, some work. So let me click on this link here. So this is Inky.org. This is this resource that I'm talking about. Um, and when you go to Inky.org or you click on the link to get there, you're going to see this home screen here. Um, and it kind of has the things that I was talking about on my very first slide. You've got you know, a way to create eBooks, a way to share your eBooks, um, and then you've got a way to discover self-published eBooks for readers right here on the homepage. 
Um, what I like to do, and for the purpose of, of looking at press books right now, um, I like coming up to this writers tab right here. And if you hover over it, you see um, kind of your two options as a writer where you can create an ebook and you can share an ebook. We're going to start with the create an ebook one though. So I go ahead and click on that. And this page here um, just has, you know, sort of the same information I just covered. Um, quick overview of what Pressbooks is. It's got a link to that video tutorial that you can watch if you'd like, as well as links to additional help resources down here. You can always come back to this page, like I said, if you get stuck or need more help with Pressbooks. But let's go ahead and go through those five steps I mentioned to create an ebook. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. When you're on inky.org on the Pressbooks page, I say right here, this big purple button that we've got for you, just go ahead and smash that, create your ebook. And that's going to pop you out to this portal page, um, which takes you from the inky.org website to Pressbooks. And once you're here, again, you're just going to click this create your book button. And this is where you're going to create an account if you don't have one yet. So if you have one, you just sign in with your username and password like I've got here. But if you haven't set up a Pressbooks account yet, this is where you're going to do that. Um, I've already got one, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in, click submit. That's going to take just a minute to, to get me there. So this is my Pressbooks dashboard. Um, so we are on the second step already. So we've gotten in to create our ebook, got our Pressbooks account, um, and we're at our, our dashboard here. If you have other books that you've created on Pressbooks, you're going to see the last thing that you were working on here. I was working on a book called Inky Practice, which I called Inky Practice. Um, you can also you know, view some of the other projects that you've worked on in Pressbooks if you have any. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come up here to this create book button. I'm going to create a whole new book. So we're going to click on that. And on this page here, you're going to be prompted to enter just some really basic information about your project. You're going to need a link to go to um, and then choose a title for your book. So for our link, we are going to use this. And we're just going to call this practice. We're going to go ahead and create that book. And again, it just takes a minute to load. Taking a little bit longer than usual. There we go. <laughs> So we're back at that dashboard page that we first saw when we signed into Pressbooks right here. But you can see now that the title has changed. This is the title I just put in um, as the new project that we're working on. And right here on the dashboard, we've got some really helpful links. Um, so you've got uh, a link here where you can go ahead and edit your book info. You can organize the text of your book, change the theme, the way that it looks. You can add an author or a user to it. Um, you also have these big, very large, very helpful buttons here. Write a new chapter. Again, if you want to use the text editor right here in Pressbooks, you could sit down and just create your work right here. You can also import content. And I'm going to come back to that button in just a minute. But I wanted to point out that, you know, these are the, probably the most helpful links for um, creating, designing, editing your, your book as you're working on it. All of these links, all of this functionality, you can also find in this toolbar right here on the side. And so if you, you know, are deep into typing a new chapter up and you realize that you, you, you know, you want to change the way it looks or something, but you don't remember how to get back to this dashboard page, you can just go over here to appearance and change it right here on the, on the toolbar. And that toolbar stays there as we work on the book, which you'll see in just a minute. Um, but since this is a brand new, brand new book um, that I've just created, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import content from a Word document. So let's just say that I, I've already written my book. It has been created and I'm ready to publish it as an ebook. So I've got it all set up in Pressbooks. I just want to go ahead and grab the, the content, the text out of a Word document, and I'm going to import it here. So I'm going to click on import content. You're going to need to choose the file. Mine's coming out of a Word document. Um, and before, well, I'll go ahead and click choose file. So I'm in a folder that I use for um, doing these demos, inky.org demos. Um, and so I've got the test book text right here. We're gonna click on that and open it up. 
Um, before I import it, well, I'm gonna go ahead and import. I'll go ahead and import it for you. So we're gonna begin import. You might recognize this text when it gets imported. Uh, so this is this is from my Word document. My Word document was broken up into sections and each section had a heading. Um, and each section with a heading has been imported as a different chapter. You might again recognize this book. It is actually Peter Pan. I did not write it. Um, it is just again what we use as sort of our practice ebook when we're doing this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and select all of these chapters that it has created for me, and I'm going to import selection. And it'll take just a minute. And once it does that, you can see here. My book has some uh, a section called front matter. That's where you can add like an introduction, a dedication, anything you want kind of at the beginning of the book. The main body of the book, that is what the file that I, I uploaded, that's what it has been imported here. This is the main body here. So you can see you've got chapters, Peter breaks through, the shadow, et cetera. And if I scroll down to the end, you have the back matter. If you want to add um, content to the end of your book, like an appendix, for example, you can add that here. So the cool thing about this, this has all been imported now. So this is into Pressbooks. Um, and if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and export it as it is. But I've got a few other options here too. Um, let's say that, you know, the book is mostly done, but I still got some editing that I want to do. And so what I can do um, is any one of these chapters and I could click on the heading. And it's going to open up the content of that chapter into a text editor right here. And so if I wanted to, I could come in here and just start typing all sorts of, you know, new cool things that are happening in the story. Um, if I decide that, you know, I'm not going to do that to J.M. Barry, we're not going to we're not gonna change Peter Pan. I think it's pretty perfect the way it is, but that's just an example of what you could do if you wanted. Um, you can then go ahead and click save out of there. It's been updated. Let's go back to organize. Um, another cool thing that you can do on this, uh, this the content page um, of Pressbooks is that, you know, so you've got all of your chapters in here and you say, you know what, I think that Wendy's story needs to happen a little bit sooner in the book. And I can just click on the title here and I can drag this up and put it right after the Mermaid's Lagoon. And so now if you were to export this book, you would see chapter seven, chapter eight. When you finish chapter eight, you would see chapter 11. But again, we're not gonna do that to J.M. Barry. We're gonna put it back where it belongs. <laughs> So that's just a few of the things that you can do um, in the Pressbooks editor. Um, it is a really powerful tool uh, that you can use to edit your book. Or like I said, you could also, if you've got uh, something that you've written that you've created that you feel is perfect and just needs that to be published as an ebook, you can skip this part entirely if you want. You can say, this is great. All I want to do now is I just kind of want to, you know, uh, change the way it looks. I'm going to change the font. So we're going to go over here to appearance. Click on that, and it's going to give me some options for themes. Um, and so it's got these themes here where you can see where it's got uh, one font for sort of the chapter heading and then another font for the text. So you could choose any of these that you want. So you know what? Peter Pan is kind of a whimsical story, so I'm going to go with this, this whimsical theme right here, Cleary. Um, so I just hover over it, and this little activate button pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and click activate. So that is now the theme of, of my book as I'm working on it. So when I export it as an ebook, this is the way the chapter headings are going to look, and this is the font it's going to be in. So once I've done that, um, I say, all right, I think the only thing that this ebook needs now, I've already got the text in there, I've got my chapter headings, I've got it edited the way I want it, I've got a font picked out along with chapter heading fonts. Um, what this ebook really needs now is a cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a cover. And to do that, I'm gonna click on this book info button right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could update some of this other information. I could change the title, say this was just a working title. And if I want to, I could put in Peter Pan as the title. I'm gonna keep this as practice for now, just so that we're clear. Um, if I wanted to add another author, I could do that down here. Um, you know, Rails is just the name of our account. So that's why it comes up as author. 
Um, any of this information though, I could add, um, if I have an ISBN, I could add it here, but this is, this is what I want to do. I want to go ahead and add a cover image. So I'm going to import this from the file. I'll click on cover image. Open. This, this works for me about 70% of the time. Let's go ahead and click save. Not because Pressbooks doesn't work, but because my, my image wasn't uh, working for a minute there, but I, I, got, I grabbed a new one, so it should be. There we go. There is the cover of our book, Peter Pan. So I've got my text in there. I've got it edited the way I want it. I've got the theme picked out and I have a cover. So that is that is four of the five steps that I mentioned to creating an ebook. So I'm to the fifth step right now. I want to go ahead and export my ebook. Um, so for exporting the, an ebook, you've got a few options. So I come over here to the export button on the toolbar. Click on that. You can export it as any of these file types. Um, so you could export it as a file that you would, you know, keep online and read online, or you could export it as a file. Um, EPUB is what is selected as the default. That is your kind of standard traditional ebook file format. Most library ebooks are in EPUB format. Um, you could also export it as a PDF for print. So if you wanted to, um, you could export it as a PDF, print it off and send it to somebody to edit it or to proofread it for you. Um, that's another great thing. You don't necessarily have to use Pressbooks just to create eBooks. There are other ways that you can use this software that would benefit you if you're trying to get your work published or self-published. We're gonna leave it as, as an EPUB for now though. Um, so I'm gonna leave EPUB selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and click export your book. And it takes just a few seconds. Just a few more seconds. And there we go. So we have an EPUB file that we've created. So from here, I can download it to my computer. Um, I can distribute it if I want to, but I have an EPUB file of my book now, which uh, is pretty exciting. So that is my very brief overview of Pressbooks. Um, before I show off the next aspect of Inky.org, which is how to share this ebook with readers, I wanted to ask if anybody had any questions about the Pressbooks part of things. And you can go ahead and either type in the chat or if you can unmute yourself, unmute and ask, feel free. Uh, Anna, I did want to interject really quickly because uh, it looks like we had some guests come in after we started. So uh, for those who might have missed uh, some of the beginning material, um, this is being recorded. We'll be on our YouTube page, so you can go back and retread some things. Um, so no worries on that end if you're a little bit uh, lost. Uh, but yes, if anyone did have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. And if not, I can just go ahead and move on to the next thing. Before I do that real quick, so I, I'm on press book still, and I just went back to my dashboard, and you can see this book that we were just working on right here is the first thing that pops up. It's got that beautiful cover right there, um, and all of the buttons that I was clicking here in the toolbar, most of that is available here on the dashboard as well. So, All right, well, I'll go back um, to my slides. And we are gonna talk about the next aspect of Inky.org, which are ways in which you can share your work. So you've you know, gone through the steps to write a book, um, you've done it, you've put it into press books, you've exported it as an ebook file, you have an ebook, that's awesome. Now, how do you get people to read it? And here's some of the ways um, that we provide for you to do that. Um, so I want to talk specifically about the Indie Author Project. The Indie Author Project is an initiative that supports self-published authors and libraries. It's sort of um, this bridge that connects self-published authors and libraries. They host and promote a collection of self-published ebooks that they make available to libraries across the country. Um, so that collection is called Indie Author Project Select. Um, these are books, ebooks, self-published ebooks that have been submitted to the Indie Author Project. Um, those ebooks are then vetted by Indie Author Project and by reviewers at Library Journal. Um, and then those reviewers select sort of the best of the best of those self-published ebooks 
and send that feedback back to the Indie Author Project. Um, and Indie Author Project puts those eBooks into a collection. To get your book into Indie Author Project Select, you need to submit it to the Indie Author Project for consideration. And you can do that via a portal on inky.org, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute. So that submission portal also grants your book uh, admission into the Indie Illinois ebook collection. Um, so this is different than Indie Author Project Select collection. Indie Illinois is a collection of self-published ebooks by Illinois authors. Um, and they are available to read via the inky.org library, which I'll show you how to get there in, in just a minute. But um, so what you would do is you would submit your book to the Indie Author Project Select. And regardless of whether or not that book is selected for Indie Author Project Select, it will end up in the Indie Illinois collection. Um, they just do a quick check to make sure that the book doesn't violate someone else's copyright in any way. Um, but, you know, barring that, the book will be available in Indie Illinois. It will be available for people to, to check out and to read, which is very, very cool. Um, and again, I'll show you that submission portal in just a second. And then the last way that I want to highlight on like how to get your book out there in front of readers um, is something called the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. If you're not, um, it is a contest that was started 10 years ago now in 2013. It was started by library professionals here in Illinois who wanted to support self-published authors um, and really showcase the power of libraries and the way that libraries can support our, our local independently published authors. Um, the project has since gone nationwide, which is really exciting. Um, and the Indie Author Project has been instrumental in getting that into, um, I think it's 15 states now. There are 15 states and two Canadian provinces that have their own statewide competitions, um, which means that there are enough statewide competitions to have one big national competition. So the winners of the statewide competitions go up against each other in this nationwide contest. So if you win the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project, you have a chance of being the national independent author, uh, soon to be famous, you know, author, um, which is pretty exciting. So there are a few different contests that you can answer, uh, that you can enter, excuse me, via soon to be famous. Um, the original one is the novel contest, the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project contest. Um, the, uh, this is again, the original one, um, it is for uh, a self-published work of adult fiction. Um, and they have in the last couple of years, they've added a second category. So it can be either adult fiction or young adult fiction. Now it used to just be adult fiction, um, but there's a contest for adult fiction, a contest for young adult fiction. If you win that contest, uh, winners receive a cash prize, uh, recognition, including inclusion in a full page print spread in library journal. You also get opportunities and events to promote your work and you are automatically entered into that national contest that I mentioned. Um, along with the original novel contest a couple years ago, the soon to be famous crew added a new contest. It was a uh, Spanish language contest. 2021 was the first year it was held. And this is for the best self-published work in Spanish. Uh, like the novel contest, the winners of the Spanish contest uh, win a cash prize. Again, recognition and opportunities to promote your book and inclusion in that full page print spread in Library Journal. And I believe Illinois is the first state to do a Spanish language contest. Um, and then the last contest uh, is the manuscript contest. And this is also a little bit newer. It was started in 2019. Um, and this one is, is really exciting. Uh, and I like talking about it, especially now in November, um, because this is for a work of fiction. This contest is for a work of fiction that has not yet been published. It's something that you're working on, but is not finished yet. Um, and, and the reason that that's an important distinction is because what you win, if you win the manuscript contest, is you win line editing services, you win professional cover design, as well as support and recognition. And when you do finish that book and decide, if you decide to self-publish, uh, that ebook is automatically entered as a semifinalist in the soon-to-be-famous Illinois Author Project novel contest the next year. Um, and this is a contest that is designed, I say I like talking about it this time of year. This is a contest that is designed to follow NaNoWriMo. So if you're doing NaNoWriMo, you're, you're um, you know, working really hard on writing your novel in November. Uh, when November is over, they open up the submission for soon to be, soon to be famous manuscript contest, and they encourage people to, to submit 
the manuscript that they worked on in November to this contest. And then they announced the winners, I believe, in like late winter, early spring of the next year. So that's a, a really, really cool thing that, that um, they have added in the last few years. So let's show you what that submission portal looks like, um, as well as kind of walk gets through the um, uh, soon to be famous site. So I am back on inky.org, just inky.org right here. Um, and the first time we were here, we went over to writers and clicked on create your ebook, but this time I'm gonna come down to share your ebook. So this page here has a lot of the information that I just covered. It has information about that uh, Indie Illinois collection, which is the collection that um, you can submit your book to be included in kind of, you know, no matter what. Um, there is Indie Author Project Select, that collection that is, uh, you know, vetted and selected by readers and editors at Library Journal, um, and then the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project. Um, and then some submission guidelines for submitting your book to the uh, Indie Author Project it needs to be in that EPUB or PDF file format. You've got no problem with that now, though, now that you know that you have access to Pressbooks, you can create those file formats, no problem. Um, so read through this. You're welcome to watch um, a quick, like, you know, informational video about it. Uh, Indie Author Project Select used to be called Self E. So if you see Self E anywhere, it's the same thing as the Indie Author Project. Um, let's go ahead and click on submit your ebook. So I'm only going to be able to get you so far into this because it uh, you have to add some information to the submission portal to see all the pages, but I'll, I'll show you how to get started. So like we did when we created a book via Pressbooks, when we started on inky.org and we clicked on the create your book button, it took us to a portal. Um, same thing here. So we want to submit our ebook. It took us to a portal for the Indie Author Project. Again, there's just some information about IAP um, as well as those submission guidelines. And then when you say you're ready, you know, I'm ready to do this, go ahead and click submit your book. And it's gonna open up this page where you're gonna have to fill in some information. So again, this is about as far as I'm gonna be able to get you, um, but you wanna put in your email, you know, your contact info, um, your role if you were the author, you know, you got some options there. Um, when you're all done with that, you go ahead and click the next button. It's not going to let me do it, but when you click the next button, you're going to be taken to a page where you're going to upload your file. Again, um, we know that you you have are going to have no problems, you know, creating that file. So once you save it and download it to your computer, you're going to go ahead and upload it here to Indie Author Project. It's going to ask you for just a few uh, details about that file. Um, you're going to read through the terms, and then you submit your book. It is pretty straightforward. Um, again, this portal uh, is for submitting your work to be included in the Indie Author Project Select collection. That is the ebook collection that is available to readers across the country. Um, but it's the same portal here if you want your book to be in the Indie Illinois collection. So if you just want it to be part of the collection of ebooks by Illinois authors, same portal. So you're just going to go through these same steps here. There's no distinction. Just go ahead and submit your file. So that is submitting to the Indie Author Project. I'm going to go back to inky.org real quick and show you Soon to be Famous because I am so excited that it is almost time for the manuscript contest. Um, I want to make sure that you all are aware of how to, where to find information about the Soon to be Famous Illinois Author Project manuscript contest and how to submit to them. Um, so back on this, this uh, page of inky.org, the share your ebook page. I'm going to come down here to this link, soon to be famous Illinois author project. And this page is a great place to go to get more information about soon to be famous. Um, it's where you can see about sort of the latest winners of, of the contest. Again, this contest has been going on for 10 years. So there are quite a few uh, ebooks out there that have won. Um, you can learn about each of the projects here. And we're going to go ahead and look at the manuscript project. So this has some information on on what the project is, what you know your your book needs to be. It needs to be adult fiction in length, fifty to one hundred thousand words. It is just for Illinois authors. Um, and then what you win if you do win right here. 
Um, and again, the 2023 contest closed in, in late winter, early spring, um, but the 2024 contest is going to be returning, it says late 2023. Um, again, they sort of time it so that it, it's right after NaNoWriMo. So you've got information about how, how, to, uh, how to enter the contest will be made available when that opens up at the end of the month. So that's soon to be famous. Let me go back to my slides really quickly. Any questions about soon to be famous or about the indie author project or how to submit your work before I move on to the next thing? I'm gonna assume that's no, and that's okay. All right, um, and then the last part of Inky.org that I want to cover is how to access locally produced content. So if you're an author, you've created your ebook on Pressbooks, you've submitted it to Indie Author Project in Indie, Illinois, and um, you want to go read ebook authors who have done the same thing. You And you can do that via a platform called the Inky.org library. So the Inky.org library is a collection of e-content. Um, it lives on a platform called Biblioboard, and it's kind of like um, if you use like Overdrive or Libby, um, that's a platform where you can access ebooks. Biblioboard, very similar. Biblioboard is a platform, and you can access ebooks, these self published ebooks by Illinois authors on that platform. Um, it is a website, it is an app that you can download, um, and all you need in order to be able to access the ebooks on the Inky.org library on Biblioboard, you just need to be in Illinois. Again, you don't need a library card. Um, you don't need to log in. You just need to be inside the state of Illinois in order to access that content. So the kinds of things you're going to find in the Inky.org library include the Indie Illinois collection, which I've mentioned. Um, these are the self-published ebooks by Illinois authors. It's the collection that you can go ahead and add your ebooks to today if you wanted to. Um, and there are all sorts of ebooks available from authors all over the state. I will show off some of that collection in just a minute. You're also going to find a collection called the Rails Community Collections or Illinois Library Community Collections. Um, and this is a really interesting collection that I love mentioning when I do these, these presentations. Um, it is a collection of e-content uh, that has been created by local libraries and local communities. Um, and so these include things like historical photo collections or community cookbooks. Um, writers group projects, they can all be uploaded into the Inky.org library. One of the most popular things um, in, in the Inky.org library are community collections of historical yearbooks that have been scanned in by libraries. Um, and it's it's a really an incredible collection. Uh, you can go back to the 1920s, the 1940s, the 1970s, and kind of go through these yearbooks and look at, um, see, you know, what what people were wearing and who was in high school back then. And so they're they're really fun to browse. And I'll show those off too when we get there. Um, something that I don't have on the slide that I want to make sure I mention though is that uh, the Inky.org library also includes a collection of Arcadia ebooks. So Arcadia local history books. So you've probably seen those books. They are um, about uh, towns in Illinois, they've got like these sort of sepia toned covers. Um, there is a large collection of those available in the Inky.org library. Again, I'll show them to you in just a minute. Um, but you can go and read up about any town in the state uh, on, on, on Inky.org library. Um, and then again, I have to mention it. I should mention it. I mention it every time I talk about it. It's a, this collection of ebooks uh, is available to everyone in Illinois. You don't need a library card, you don't need to log in. The other thing I have not mentioned, though, is that unlike, like if you use Overdrive or Libby, uh, there are no holds and no waits for any of these ebooks. They're available to everybody all the time. Um, and so it's a really great place to go if you're looking for something to read right now. Um, there's some really fantastic content that you can access immediately. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Inky.org library. We'll walk you through it. Quickly. So I am back on Inky.org, but this time what I'm going to do, instead of going to the writers button up here, I'm going to go over to the readers button where you're going to see some information, kind of what I just talked about, uh, about the Indie Illinois collection, about those, the Illinois libraries community collections that I mentioned, um, and then just some information on how to access these. You can either go through the Biblioboard website or you can download the Biblioboard app 
there is an app for iOS and Android. So if you wanted to, um, you could be looking at this content on you know, your smartphone or tablet, et cetera. But I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this link here, inky.org library. The other thing you can do is you can just go directly to illinois.biblioboard.com and that's where you're gonna find all of this content. So this is what you see when you arrive. Um, the homepage of the inky.org library are what they call curations. Um, and they are kind of akin to like a display in a library. And so these will change out periodically. We'll create new curations and kind of show off or highlight some different works. Um, we've got some kind of standard ones up there right now. We've got some Indie Illinois uh, titles highlighted here. If you scroll down, you can see some highlights of the Illinois Library's community collections. Again, those yearbooks I was talking about. You can just it's a fast track to view them right here. Um, and then those Arcadia publishing titles that I mentioned, this is a, a small selection of some of the ones that you'll see on the inky.org library. Um, and we also have set, kind of set aside a collection of award-winning Illinois authors. These are former winners of the soon to be famous Illinois author projects. So see, these are some of the award-winning eBooks. If you wanna see, okay, what does it take to win soon to be famous? Go ahead and dive into some of these and see um, what people across the state are creating. But my favorite way to browse the inky.org library is actually to come up here to the menu button and click on modules because the modules are going to show you everything. So uh, again, those three main collections, the Arcadia collection, Indy Illinois, and the community collections, um, we're going to start by looking at Indy Illinois. We're going to go ahead and dive into there. So again, these are ebooks that are um, self-published by Illinois authors, and you can see just the variety. These are, this is broken into genre, um, and within each of these, there are, you know, um, up to dozens and dozens of ebooks in each of these different categories. Um, just tons of stuff that has been written, self-published, and submitted to be included in Indy, Illinois, um, from authors all over the state. So browse through the genres. Um, let's say, um, I don't know, I'm feeling like reading a fantasy book. Go ahead and click on fantasy. Uh, and you can see a selection of the ebooks that are available here. You can scroll through them if you want. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on The Journeyman. Um, so there is just a quick description here of the book. Um, some of these, the the these self-published books have the option to buy in print, which is um, kind of nice for the authors, is that they, you know, are sharing their work with the library and making their book available to the library. But they're also then there's they've got the option of adding this buy in print link up here so they can also be selling their book at the same time and, and be making money off of off of their work um, just by making it available in the library if a reader chooses to buy it. Um, and I also said, I think with uh, the ebooks that are available in the inky.org library, again, no holds, no waits, everything is available simultaneously. And so if I wanted to go ahead and read this book, all I need to do is click on the read button. I, you notice I did not have to log in with my library card. I didn't have to log in with the username. It's just available to me because I am in the state of Illinois right now. And it really is that easy. I could just start reading the book right now. So the cool thing about this book specifically, um, The Journeyman by, uh, uh, I think it's Michael, Michael Allen Peck. Um, this was one of the winners of the soon to be famous Illinois author project. Um, I don't think he was the first winner, but he was close. He's one of like the original soon to be famous Illinois author project authors. Um, and he has since, um, you know, come back and done events for, for Seem to Be Famous and for the, the Indie Author Project and has been a really great partner um, and involved because, uh, you know, he submitted his work to the contest and he won. And so he's sort of part of the Soon to Be Famous family now. And you can read his book whenever you want. So that is a really quick run through on how to uh, browse, access and read an ebook on the inky.org library. Um, I'm going to show off some of those other collections very quickly. So the Rails Community Collections or Illinois Library Community Collections, you'll see it both ways. Again, these are collections that have been created by libraries around the state, around Illinois. 
Um, and you can find some really, really interesting things here. So you've got, like I said, a community cookbook collection from Plainfields. Um, you've got some historical photos. I believe it is the Brookfield Library. Um, their historical photos are some of the most popular on the site because they've got all these old photos of when the zoo, when the Brookfield Zoo was built. Um, so that's a pretty cool collection. Um, and then these yearbooks, these yearbooks are so much fun to browse. Different communities have uploaded different yearbooks across decades. And um, I don't know about you, but I could spend hours just go, going through these and, um, you know, having fun with, with some of what's, what's been published in high school yearbooks. And again, I didn't need to put in my library card. I didn't need to log in. And no holds, no weights. I can just be browsing through these, you know, at my leisure. They're just so much fun, I think. So that's uh, kind of a taste of what's in the Illinois Library or Rails Community Collections. Um, and then let me show off the Arcadia titles really quickly. So again, Arcadia Publishing, the History Press, um, these are those titles that are known, like I said, for having, there's, there are those paperbacks, they have these kind of sepia toned um, covers, but we have a whole collection of them from communities, um, places, subjects, groups around Illinois, about Illinois. Um, and you are welcome again to read these at your leisure. They are available to everyone all the time, um, 16 pages worth of, of Illinois stuff. Um, really, if, if you're a history nerd like I am, really fascinating, really fun to kind of browse this collection. And, you know, it's yours. It's yours to look at whenever you want. So that is a quick run through of the Inky.org library. Let me pop back to the slides real quick. I just have a quick recap slide. Um, and just wanted to note that, again, Inky.org, it is a suite of resources um, where you can go to create ebooks via press books. You can share ebooks with readers um, via the Indie Author Project submission portal, get that ebook into the Indie Illinois collection. And then you can discover and read ebooks by local Illinois authors, by local communities, or about local communities via the inky.org library. Um, again, available to anyone in Illinois. You do not need a library card. You do not need to log in. You already have access to all of this just through your library. Um, so so yeah, that's that's my spiel about Inky.org and the Inky.org library. 